So let's learn what the fictitious force is. It's a common mistake for the people who are going to solve a problem in the cases the system is accelerating. Let's say you are in a car like that and the car suddenly accelerates forward. You feel that something is pulling you back to the opposite direction of acceleration. This is called fictitious force. Is it a real force? You feel inside the car, you feel it's real. Can we use that in solving the problem? No, you can't. This is what Newton said. What should we do? So let's learn it from the scratch. First of all, let's learn what the inertia reference frame is and what the non-inertia reference frame is. You are in a train which is not accelerated. You could be at rest or moving at a constant velocity. Same direction, same magnitude. You are in a very proper reference frame because you don't feel any fictitious force. So this is a real inertia reference frame. Your friend also who is at rest relative to a station and also in relative motion from his perspective because you are, you are moving rightward. Your friend confirms that you are moving, but you don't have any acceleration. He is also in an inertia reference frame. Both of you are allowed to use Newton's laws of motion for solving all the problems for the objects around you. So an inertia reference frame is a reference frame, which is not acceleration, okay, or, or could be at rest. Motion has no problem, but it, it shouldn't have any acceleration. The case is going to be complicated when the system is accelerated. When the car is accelerated rightward, as you're, as you're always pulled back uh, because of the fictitious force, you feel that something is always a, a, a very fictitious force, a very magic force is pulling you back. If you have a mass of m, actually you feel a fictitious force of ma to the opposite direction of acceleration. It's due to your inertia. It's not that real force. The reason is that just you have inertia and you want to keep your initial state. And so you are not allowed to use Newton's laws of motion for solving the problems for the objects around you. You feel you are at rest relative to the train, and you are. But you and your train are both accelerating objects. So actually you are in a non-inertia reference frame. What should I do? My friend is still at rest and it's not accelerated relative to the station. He's a very proper reference frame for us for solving the problems. He thinks that you in a train are accelerated forward and the total net horizontal force acting on you is MA. M is your mass and A is your acceleration. Again, I emphasize you have the same acceleration as the car. The reason is that you are part of that. So from now on, we do not use Newton's laws of motion for the non-inertia reference frames. These are not the proper reference frames for solving the problems. We always use an inertia reference frame. And let's say how. Again, you are in a train. The train has no acceleration and everything is okay. We say acceleration is zero, the pendulum is at rest, the pendulum has no acceleration, you are in an inertia reference frame and you are allowed to use all Newton's laws of motion here. Let's say the uh, total force acting on the pendulum is zero and according to you, there is a tension of the string like that and uh, downward force of mg. They are equal. Yeah, t is equal to mg, no acceleration. So far, everything is okay. Okay. Again, I give acceleration to the train. When the train is accelerated rightward, immediately the pendulum is deviated leftward. Uh, of course, it stays there. And you may think that, okay, the pendulum is at rest relative to me. So let's say, again, the pendulum is in equilibrium, but it's not. It is not in equilibrium. The reason is that all the system is accelerated. You are accelerated. The pendulum is accelerated. It can't be in equilibrium anymore. Oh my God, what should I do? You should immediately forget about yourself because you are unfortunately in a very improper reference frame. You are in a non-inertia reference frame and you can't use Newton's laws of motion for solving this problem. What should I do? I should immediately consider a person who is at rest relative to a station, your friend. He has no acceleration and he is allowed to judge about this pendulum. He thinks that there are still a couple of forces acting on the bomb. 
one of them is the average dis existing force of mg downward and the other is the tension of the rope t okay let's take a system of coordinate cartesian system of coordinate like this to decompose the t mg is a very good boy downward but t is not and t, it must be decomposed how to decompose that anyway you have a couple of parallel lines and an oblique so if this is alpha this is also alpha so immediately i can take this uh, angle to be alpha and then i decompose the t uh, this component is gonna be t cosine of alpha why because we have a right triangle the hypotenuse is t and this is the adjacent let's say this adjacent adjacent is ty actually if this is alpha ty divided by t is going to be cosine of alpha so ty seems to be t cosine of alpha so this is t cosine of alpha the other the same way will be t sine of alpha now it's okay please forget about the t because we already decomposed it and it has a couple of components working on behalf of it okay on horizontal direction the bob according to you who is at rest relative to the station the bob is accelerated in horizontal direction and the acceleration is a everything in this train is accelerated rightward with the same acceleration of a everything okay the reason for that acceleration is just the t sine of alpha so i can say in horizontal direction f net is gonna be fx f net in x direction is ma and this fx is exactly t sine of alpha that's all about the vertical direction mind i see that uh, the bob has no acceleration in vertical direction so t cosine of alpha must cancel the mg so here in vertical direction the total fy net force in vertical direction will be zero so uh, t cosine alpha must be equal to mg now i'm gonna get rid of this t i can divide both sides uh, by each other and so sine of alpha here divided by cosine cosine of alpha will be ma over mg so if i cancel the m it will be a over g and you see that sine over cosine is tangent so tangent of alpha will be a over g alpha is the angle of deviation for this pendulum a is the acceleration of the system and of course the acceleration of the pendulum and g is the uh, acceleration of gravity another very interesting case is an elevator case you are uh, on a, an awaiting scale in the cabin and the cabin has no acceleration actually it can can be at rest it can be in constant velocity vertically offward downward doesn't matter actually just keep in mind there is no acceleration here the you are also a person who is in a proper reference frame i mean the inertial one and you are allowed to use newton's laws of motion uh, about yourself and about all objects around you and also your friend who is out of the cabin at rest relative to the ground is also in a proper inertial reference frame both of you will have the same judgment about uh, the forces acting on your body for instance you think and your friend also thinks that uh, you are acted by a downward force of mg and an upward force of n which is supplied by the weighting scale here actually the weighting scale something you read here is exactly the n okay and the n is equal to mg because the f net is zero why there is no acceleration so actually we believe that n is equal to mg n minus mg is zero so n is equal to mg so far it's very easy case uh, both both of you the your friend who is at rest relative to the ground and you as maybe a probable moving person in this reference frame as you have no acceleration are going to be inertial reference frames the other is when you have acceleration the cabin is accelerated upward i don't think necessarily the cabin may go upward no acceleration is upward so from now on you are not the, the, in a proper reference frame you are unfortunately in a non-inertial reference frame 
and you are not allowed to judge about yourself and the forces acting on you. What should I do? I should ask my friend who is at rest relative to ground. He thinks that the elevator, you and the waiting escape all are accelerating upward. And then he will say there is a downward force of mg acting on you and a normal force which is acted on you because you are in contact with the uh, waiting scale. And then he immediately thinks that n can't be equal to mg. Why? Because if they are equal, you are not accelerated. You are accelerated. So n is larger than mg. How do we know that n is larger than mg? You are accelerated offward, so it's the larger force. Larger force is always to the direction of acceleration. What should I do here? I, sh I can apply the Newton's second law of motion uh, according to my friend who is out of the cabin. Okay, he will say F net is equal to MA. M is your mass, your mass. And I'm just solving the problem about you. And the total net force will be uh, an upward force of N and a downward force of MG. N minus MG is equal to MA. So N will be equal to MG plus MA. Now you will read N on the weighting scale. A weighting scale is indicating your weight and unfortunately something more. This is exactly the fictitious force. And actually you are fooling the weighting scale. It thinks that you are heavier than usual. And how heavier you are? Exactly because of, um, according to the MA, equal to MA. This is, let's say MA is, MA, I don't know, is 15 or 150 newtons. So the weighting scale indicates 150 newtons more, more than your actual weight. Actual weight, I mean the weight you feel when you are at rest without an acceleration, okay? The other case is when the elevator is accelerating downward. Again, you are inside the cabin, you are in an improper uh, um, reference frame and you are not allowed to use the Newton's laws of motion even about yourself because you are in a non-inertial reference frame. Again, I will ask my friend outside the cabin who is at rest relative to ground to think about me. He will think that, okay, uh, a force of mg is acting on the person downward and the other is the normal force, okay? Here, mg is larger force. The reason, acceleration is downward, so it's the larger and n is the smaller one. F net acting on you will be MA. M is your mass. A is the acceleration of the cabin. And of course, your acceleration. F net is the larger force minus a smaller force. MG minus N is equal to MA. And finally, you can, I can write N is equal to MG minus MA. Actually, here, something you read on the, the screen of this weighting scale is less than your actual weight. Uh, Actually, it's uh, MA is smaller than the actual weight. Again, it's because of the fictitious force. This is why the weighting scale is not a proper um, system of weighting when you are using that in non-inertia reference frame. The last is the case in which you are in a car and you are orbiting a circle. Let's say you are in a roundabout and riding a car. Okay, inside the car, you feel that you are uh, pulling out of the circle. Actually, if this is the center of the circle, you are pulled out. Uh, sometimes it is called the centrifugal force. Yes, centrifugal force, let me write it, centrifugal, centrifugal force. It's unfortunately a fictitious force and it's not something to be considered for solving the problems because you are in an uh, accelerated reference frame. So you are in a uh, non-inertial reference frame in the car and centrifugal force is just something uh, you may feel. Uh, so what should I do? I should take the mission to my uh, friend who is out of the car and at rest relative to ground. He thinks that I am not at rest and also I am not um, um, actually in a constant velocity motion. The reason is that although my speed may be constant, but as the car is always moving on in a roundabout, 
it's changing the direction of motion. So as the velocity is a vector, I am accelerated. So if you are accelerated, the force must act on you, uh, actually normal to the velocity, to keep you on this uh, rotational motion. And this force is called the centripetal force. Centripetal force is the real force we always use for solving the problem. According to an inertial uh, reference frame, uh, relative to a person who is at rest on the ground. So instead of um, centrifugal force, which is the judgment of the people in the car, we always use the centripetal force as a very important actual force acting on you when you are orbiting a circle. Another very easy question. Can we consider the Earth as an inertial reference frame? The answer is a big no. The reason, Earth has a spin. When something is, has a spin, objects on that object, like you, will have a rotational motion. And that rotational motion will bring a non-inertial system for you, so you are not in a proper reference frame. More than that, you, you know that the Earth also is orbiting the Sun. And that orbital motion, of course, will bring another non-inertial reference frame for you. But how can we use always the Newton's laws of motion when you're solving the problems on the Earth? It's an approximate. Actually, we ignore those fictitious forces. And again, thank you very much for being with me. Take care. See you in the next video.